my channel this is episode number I haven't even got enough fingers 11 of the glaciated landscapes and change series that over here on my channel if you haven't seen the rest of them I'll link the playlist up here go watch that afterwards and yeah we are coming to the end of it and I hope this has been useful today we're going to be looking at the Lake District and the case study that is the Lake District and all about that and all that jazz if this is your first time here hello you're so welcome here I'm Lara I'm a second year geography and education student at Liverpool Hope University and I needed this when I was doing my A-levels so I really hope this is useful for you I think that's enough rumblings from me so without further ado let's get straight on into this video hit like subscribe I upload these every week and yeah let's get straight on into it Glaciated landscapes in the UK. There are no glaciers remaining in the UK today. However, a number of distinct relict glaciated landscapes, that is relics of a previous climate, still exist in the UK. These landscapes developed when the climate was much colder and a large part of the UK was covered by ice. 18,000 years ago, the upland areas of the Lake District, the Cambrian Mountains and Scotland were shaped by valley glaciers which eroded the underlying rocks to create distinctive landscapes with features such as U-shaped valleys, ribbon lakes and corries. These landscapes have enormous environmental, economic and cultural value, but they are challenging areas to live and work. Relict glaciated landscapes can also be found in low-lying areas that were covered by glacial deposits such as the boulder clay of Holderness, which was deposited by Scandinavian ice key players in managing the Lake District. Over 60 million visitors arrive in the Lake District every year, attracted by the dramatic scenery and the well-developed tourist facilities. The local economy benefits hugely from this influx. In 2014, visitors spent £1.1 billion, which helped to support local shops, hotels, pubs and activity centres. Many services that benefit tourists also benefit local people, such as better public transport and roads. Some of the money that tourists bring also is used to protect the environment that the visitors come to see. Tourism provides over 16,000 jobs, full-time equivalents, in the Lake District National Park, as well as boosting the local economy through the multiplier effect. This is the way in which development creates an upward spiral so that investment and spending both increases employment and leads to further economic activity. However, both the landscape and ecology of the Lake District are fragile and under threat to overuse. Activities such as walking, climbing and camping can lead to footpath erosion, trampling and littering which challenge the area's resilience and the Lake District is also experiencing further problems. Additional tourist traffic causes congestion and pollution. Jobs in the tourism industry are often poorly paid and seasonal. An increase in demand for housing, often for second or holiday homes, is driving up house prices. So local people can no longer afford to buy homes where they grew up. Up to a fifth of the houses in the national park are now second or holiday homes. Footpath erosion. There are almost 2,000 miles of footpaths and rights of way in the Lake District. However, the very people who come to enjoy these footpaths can inadvertently create major problems. Walkers destroy vegetation and compact the soil, which reduces infiltration rates. The exposed soil is then also more easily washed away by heavy rain, which the Lake District receives a lot of. Gullies may then form along footpaths, which channel even more water and cause further erosion. When walkers try to avoid badly eroded sections of footpath, they inevitably end up widening the path. Increased storms as a result of climate change are likely to worsen the problem. The Lake District National Park Authority has been working to repair footpaths for over 40 years. Teams of rangers and volunteers use various techniques for this, but it's a slow and expensive task. Water storage, forestry and farming. Tourism is particularly important to the Lake District's economy. 
but the area also has other important uses, including farming, water storage and forestry. Farming. Langdale in the Lake District is typical of the landscapes that tourists come to see. This landscape is dominated by farming. The trend is towards fewer and larger hill farms. There has also been an increase in the number of the smallest holdings. Water storage and forestry. Thermal lies between Keswick and Grasmere. The dam at the northern end was constructed by Manchester Corporation in the late 19th century to provide water for the city's expanding population. Before the reservoir was built, this glacial valley contained two small tarns, a small hamlet with a pub, creating a reservoir submerged the towns and the settlement. A 96 mile aqueduct, first connected in 1894, was built to carry water from Thirlmere to Manchester. This aqueduct is still in use today, but now also carries water from Horswater, which was turned into a reservoir in 1935. The land surrounding Thirlmere is forested. This reduces soil erosion, which could cause siltation of the reservoir and also generates income from selling the timber. The reservoir and its surrounding forests are both managed by United Utilities, who are responsible for looking after the wildlife and protecting the reservoir from pollution. The Lake District and climate change. It is likely that climate change will mean hotter, drier summers, warmer, wetter winters and more extreme weather events in the UK. Like the storms that caused the extensive flooding in Cumbria in 2009 and 2015. Climate change now threatens the Lake District's unique landscape and fragile ecosystem. Some of the likely impacts are the loss of indigenous plant and animal species, particularly those at the edge of their range, such as the mountain ringlet butterfly, an increase in non-native species which could affect food chains, the gradual movement of habitats from lower to higher altitudes, making those higher altitudes smaller and more vulnerable, an increase in insect species, such as the midge, which can infect cattle with blue tongue disease, seen for the first time in Britain in 2007. The heavy rain will wash away more soil and farm chemicals into the lake, causing siltation and eutrophication, whatever that is. On the fells will dry out in the warmer summers, releasing more stored carbon, and the dry moorland will also be more prone to fires. That the forest will be at greater risk from damage and gales in the winter and forest fires in the summer and that the roads and properties will be damaged by winter floods. Key players in managing for the future. In 1951, the Lake District was designated as one of England's first national parks. The LDNPA is responsible for managing the area, but only owns a tiny proportion of the land, 3.9%. The rest of it is owned by a variety of organisations and private landowners. The Lake District National Park Partnership was formed in 2006 to give organisations involved in the park more say in its management. 25 organisations or stakeholders are involved, which represent the public, private, community and voluntary sectors. These include Action with Communities in Cumbria, Cumbria Association of Local Councils, Cumbria City Council, Environment Agency, Historic England, LDNP, National Trust and United Utilities. Tackling climate change. In 2008, the Low Carbon Lake District initiative was launched. It is a programme to tackle climate change and is working with local businesses and communities and other agencies to reduce greenhouse gases. This is a form of mitigation and prepare the impacts of climate change, which is an adaption strategy. Work to create low carbon lake district includes the following initiatives. Using low carbon budget, which means that carbon emissions from the local area works to meet reduction targets. Go Lakes travel program with the aim of transforming how visitors get to and travel around the central and southern lake district. Planning policies to make the highest energy efficient standards and integrate low carbon energy generation where possible. The vision for 2030. The Lake District National Parks Partnership vision for 2030 is spelled out. The Lake District National Park is focused on the future. Strategies cover everything from biodiversity, water quality, farming, skills, training, to employment, housing, transport and tourism. This is what it says. The Lake District National Park will be an inspirational example of sustainable development in action. 
It'll be a place where a prosperous economy, world-class visitor experiences and vibrant communities all come together to sustain a spectacular landscape. It's wildlife and cultural heritage. Local people, visitors and the many organisations working in the Lake District or who have a contribution to make it must be uniting in achieving this. And that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, please like, comment down below what you learned, subscribe while you're down there, and I'll link the other playlists up here with all the rest of the geography series in there. So you can go and check that out. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share with someone who you thought was useful, who you think this might be useful for, and I will see you same time, same place, Monday, 4.30 p.m. next week. Bye, guys. Thank you.